Hello, and welcome back to the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion. We're on class 18 today, where we're finishing up with the kinematics of rigid bodies. Uh, we're dealing with Coriolis acceleration analysis today. So this is the third class in rigid body acceleration. The bottom line up front. Now, by the way, you can always skip this and go right to the examples uh, by going down into the description below and going to the table of contents. Um, acceleration analysis well, um, sometimes happens where we have a frame of reference that could be moving, right? It could be in motion. Uh, we also might have a part of the, um, uh, of the piece that we're looking at could change in length. And when that happens, we'll have these um, additional component called uh, Coriolis acceleration right there, which um, just as an equation right there in polar coordinates, we saw and we referenced that it was um, this 2 times r dot times theta dot. And the, uh, the r dot is a, a, a radial velocity, and then the theta dot is an angular velocity, and the combination of those two creates a separate um, acceleration. And we saw in the derivation back in particle uh, kinematics, remember back all the way back in there? We saw, um, which I believe is class 5. If we go back to class 5, you can look and you can see that we can see where the derivation or, or taking the, um, the derivative of the uh, unit, the motion of the uh, unit vector in polar notation generates this r dot and theta dot term, in fact, two of them. Um, we can also saw uh, in the last class when we were uh, using the complex notation uh, uh, for the vector loops, uh, that, well, that was the uh, purpose of it. Um, we also saw that there's this uh, um, additional terms uh, that dropped out right there. Um, so if we wanted to write out a complete two-dimensional uh, acceleration equation that took account of everything that could possibly take place, um, we would include new terms. And here's the two new terms. This term right here, where we have 2 times theta dot times v, right? So this v is a relative velocity uh, between the two points b and c, and that's going to be the same thing, a uh, similar thing to the r dot term. And then we can also see that we're going to have the acceleration of b with respect to c um, if the thing is, uh, so this would be the equivalent of having an r double dot right there, right? So now we've kind of like closed the loop a little bit between rigid body um, acceleration and particle acceleration when we were dealing with um, polar uh, coordinates, right? So here's where the r double dot shows up, and here is where that 2 theta dot r dot um, shows up in there. All right, so um, the idea, and my thing isn't big up here, what are you doing? Okay. Um, here's what we had from polar coordinates, right? Um, and, and one way to look at this, or one, one uh, so, some of the uh, analysis or some of the, the origins, should we say, of Coriolis acceleration came from some observation when you were moving on a, uh, say, say a rotating frame and you start to walk outwards. You have this combination of an R dot and a theta dot, right? So there's r dot as you're moving in a radial direction in a theta dot, and you feel this kind of shove over to the side. That's the Coriolis acceleration, right? And here we have, and in this case, it's VA with respect to O, where O is the center right there. But you also have, and I drew the, uh, the uh, angular uh, velocity in the opposite direction as it's drawn right there. But th that right there is the thing that's creating an acceleration. But this can also take place if you were to, say, have linkages that are moving, that are rotating and changing in length. And here I show it as a, a piston, maybe, that's expanding right here. And it's going to move. You can see in the, in the hash line, here's other positions that it could possibly have. Or you could have then this slotted uh, piece right here. You could see that um, this distance between uh, B and C is going to change as this thing moves around. Right. So, uh, but that also that 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 piece BC is not only is it changing in length, but it's also uh, rotating. So that rotation 
and uh, that uh, a sliding action, that rotation and that changing of length is where we're going to experience the, uh, of the Coriolis acceleration, or we're going to need to account for it in order for things really to balance out in, in one level. So uh, that's how it, it, the, the relationship it happens in, uh, in rigid bodies, or an example of it happening in rigid bodies. So, uh, so a velocity analysis of this thing should take into account of um, this relative velocity right here, which you can think of as the r dot uh, that's taking place. And also, we have a theta dot and an r right there. And so uh, um, that, that's um, also part of the thing that needed to take place. Um, and then as I've written out the uh, acceleration equation, we talked about that in the bottom line up front. These, of course, this, but by the way, this is in two dimensions. Have to make sure uh, we're clear of that. Okay, so here's an example where I have um, this uh, slotted uh, piece right here. It's like a, a simple mechanism here where um, uh, the link AB right here, okay, so AB, A and B, um, is at 60 degrees. That theta AB is at 60 degrees. And um, the link is traveling at 3 radians per second clockwise, and, and it's increasing, right? So it's coming out that way as drawn right here. Right, it's already drawn on there. Uh, theta dot is three radians per second clockwise, and it's increasing. So also its angular uh, acceleration theta double dot a b is five radians per second, and both going clockwise. Length um, of a b is one meter long. That's nice and uh, short. And uh, the pin at b is located at uh, 0.75. On the slot, excuse me, that was gross, that was rude. Um, determine the velocity and acceleration of the length in the slot and the angular speed and acceleration of the slotted link uh, BC, right? So putting this together, here's the, some of the unknowns, uh, or the knowns, so I should say. AB would be treated as negative 3K, right? It's negative because it's clockwise. Um, and it's negative 5K because it's also clockwise acceleration of AB. Um, and so the uh, relative position vector of B with respect to A, so that's the reason, that's the direction we want to go from B with respect to A. Um, we, we write out those things and okay, yeah, so uh, B with respect to A, is that right? B with respect to A. I think I want to make that negative. Hmm. No, no, it's B with respect to A. I'm sorry. Yes, no, that's correct. Right? So, so we're coming from A to B, right? So that you got to be careful as I'm saying this. I start to confuse myself. I don't want to confuse you by confusing myself. We're, we're using A as the reference. So that's this guy right there. Yes, we're going, going to B from A. And then going from uh, B, going to B from C is going to be this RB um, with respect to C. Right, and that's 0.75, it's positive, okay. And now, um, so find the velocity of B. Uh, we just write out the thing, right? So we don't know the velocity of B, but we do know this angular velocity. So we'll write B uh, using A as the reference, which we know is gonna be zero, by the way. And uh, so we have um, simply this uh, theta k cross uh, with the r right in there, so. Um, we cross those in, right? And what we we end up finding the velocity of b right here. So we have the velocity of b. Now that's the velocity of b just based on link a b. But now we can also write out an equation for b based on link uh, b c, right? So here is the velocity of b using C as the reference, right? But now we have to be careful. Now there's going to be uh, multiple parts of this because now there's a relative velocity uh, member. You could think of that as the R dot thing uh, that's taking place, right? So uh, we, have an, a, a, we don't know the angular velocity and we don't know this relative velocity of the thing. Um, but we go ahead and put in this equation for relative, uh, um, th this, uh, for the sliding thing right here. And, um, you know, we have a cross that has to be taken care of. But once we cross this thing, let me get rid of my little lines so they don't distract from you. Um, 
notice we have a J and there's an I. So here you go. This is the uh, two parts of this. Well, this velocity here that we've calculated based on this link BC has to be equal to the velocity that we calculated from link uh, AB, right? So we can set those two things equal to each other. And so the I's have to equal each other and the J's have to equal each other. All right, so uh, from that, we were able to figure out what that R dot has to be, right? So this guy right here, if we solve for the I's, we uh, just uh, automatically say, okay, well, yeah, it's, got, it, it, it's, it's the same point, so it has to be moving at that speed. But now we're able to use in the J's, we're able to find um, uh, what, what that uh, theta um, dot BC is going to be. And we find that it's a negative 2 radians per second. So it's rotating in that direction. That's the theta dot BC that we would want to find. Now, um, we also want to do the acceleration analysis of this. right? So we take the acceleration of B uh, from AB, right? Um, and this is the full uh, equation, but uh, there's a number of things like in here. Uh, we know that um, the um, B doesn't change with respect to A, and uh, B doesn't change with respect to A. So the, both of those are zero uh, for there. But we do have the other portions that we have to consider, uh, which is the tangential component. That's this guy right here, right? That's that guy. And then we also have... Um, this guy right here, which is the uh, really the normal uh, component. But uh, we write that out, and we, we know what the acceleration of B is going to be. We could do this much simpler, I think, by, by doing a, a, an acceleration diagram. But this is using um, the uh, vector math. Now we can take the acceleration of joint B, but now use it uh, with uh, link BC, right? So we just found the acceleration of B from link AB, but now let's find it from link BC, right? And so here's that full equation um, and writing out the things that we uh, know. We don't know what the angular acceleration of BC is. Um, we do know this we just found it up above right we just found um no no we found it in the velocity analysis right and we did find the velocity analysis right here uh, of these two things right so we have uh that um yeah so here here's that and we have that right and now uh, here's an unknown right here so we have this unknown and we have this unknown so let's go ahead and uh, distribute out those uh, uh cross products um, solve and now here is the um, equation for uh, for B right here in terms of I and J uh, leaving the unknowns that uh, are here but but we can equate this acceleration and that acceleration because we're dealing with the same point and uh, okay now that just simplified the thing up above so now now we can equate those two things right we can equate this with this and that's what we've done below and we can now we could solve for i right and uh yes we uh were able to solve for him by taking the uh the, the solution of the i's and then we could find um using the j's we're able to find uh this uh theta double dot right so here's what the solution is uh to to this problem uh using vector math we also probably wanted to know, uh, yeah, so here's, here's the th four pieces of information we wanted. Um, okay, so that, that was for uh, Coriolis acceleration, to give you the idea. I didn't use any diagram uh, methods. I only used vector math in this. Um, I believe, um, and I might be making a liar out of myself, I think in this uh, section... I might have done, yeah, I did do this problem in the book. I did it with um, uh, that uh, uh, polar notation right there. Just to give you sort of like a, a little bit more of how this thing would work out if you were going to do the uh, vector loops um, for this piece. And I also do a, uh, another piece that's called an inverted slider crank as well. Um, so anyway, um, for more examples, uh, check out the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion. Ooh, look at that. Yes, the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion. It's got a two-volume set, part one and part two. And it's uh, published by Morgan and Claypool. 
and the links below will take you to where you could get them. You can also get them through Amazon. Just do a search on the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion. And please subscribe to the channel and uh, provide feedback down in the comment section below. Thank you very much and have a great dynamic day.